What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles. You are listening to Lyles Movie Files. But yeah, so we recorded an entire show, like a full-fledged deal last night. I joked to the fellas, you know, we're going to have to uh, probably come back later and break it down because Disney was unveiling their big, massive slate for 2021 and 2022. And I thought it was just going to be like a little footnote, but no, no, no. They just went out there and just like laid waste to every streaming service out there. And it's like, yeah, this is where you want to put your money. And so I knew I needed to just kind of reformat the show, make a quick emergency podcast with little brother Jace. So we're going to talk about this big reveal from Disney about Star Wars, about Marvel Studios, and maybe a few other things. Because it was just a crazy few hours because nothing really happened on Thursday and then all of a sudden the floodgates open. Bro, how you doing? Uh I'm 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 entertained by Disney saying bump your podcast. But you know, other than that, I'm good. <laughs> Yo, my, you know my boy Chris, he he was posting on Facebook. So HBO or he said Disney Plus basically just spent four hours saying your streamers trash. <laughs> and does Kevin Feige come out to Ether or not? <laughs> yeah, that, that worked as well. And then his last one, he did a GIF or did a meme of Mickey Mouse, you know, sitting on the couch, you know, the Jordan deal, deal sitting on the couch with a Mickey Mouse head saying, and I took that personally. <laughs> and all of it worked so well because that was exactly how it felt like it was going down. Just an insane amount of, yeah, this is why you guys subscribe to Disney Plus. You may not see it this year in 2020. We thought you would, but no. But 2021, it's going to be all worth it. And wow, so much stuff. So I guess, which one do you want to start with? Star Wars? Let's start with Star Wars. Let's go Let's Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, which way do you want to go? I mean, I mean, if they had just said, you know, Mickey Mouse was making a new live action movie and they were going to digitally, I mean, make a hologram of Mickey Mouse running around, I'd have bought it. I mean, just, they just said, hey, we can do anything now. We got money. Yeah. I mean, we don't need investors. <laughs> we got our investors. Our, our investors are our customer base. We're not going to Disney World or Disneyland, but they will be plopped in front of their TVs. Plugging down their sweet, sweet $70 for us. Take my money. And our premium access films. So before we even go there, I, I missed this earlier when I was, because I was on the road checking out Christmas lights. And I was like, wait, this is going on. And I was like, uh, okay. And then I, the updates were slowly coming through. And I was like, I need to write this. And so it took me a little longer than I would have. But anyhow, so they've got a bunch of animated shows coming. Baymax. From Big Hero 6. Oh. Yeah. So I'm going to watch that. Yep. Z- Zootopia Plus is getting a show. Princess Tiana from Princess and a Frog. So we've got a black animated show. Good stuff. And Moana. So Dang. good stuff from Disney Plus. Diverse. Good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, geez. There's this that lineup that I mentioned all characters people of color because big hero six are you know asian characters so totally not playing lip service and just going oh we'll we'll do this yeah that sounds like a good idea yeah black lives matter but this is good evidence that yeah we were listening and we were paying attention and we're doing something about it you know i think it's more so it's like we know even though we have a captive audience probably for a little bit of next year. We've been planning this for a couple of years. I mean, and we really know it's like when we came out with our streaming service, we are pro- appealing to the broadest demographic possible. Absolutely. And I mean, whew, we are, you think about HBO Max and what they're offering compared to this Disney Plus lineup. You get a Friends reunion. Yay. yay. Hey, guys, remember when we stayed two seasons too long? Yeah, remember when Ross and Rachel were in the hospital and then he didn't want to post? Yeah, yeah. You're going to see uh-huh. two more years of that. 
Yeah. Or when Joey started dating Rachel. Oh yeah, yeah. That was cool. That was that was fun. Everyone loved that. Yeah. All right, one more. When Barney started dating Robin. Oh wait, different show. Uh, uh, yeah, another one that stayed past its expiration date too. Yeah. Ooh, this is rotten. So <laughs> Gabrielle Union is going to star in a cheaper by the dozen reimagining from Kenya Barris. It's going to be on 2022. Blended family of 12. Should work. I think that works. Gabrielle Union deserves to be in a starring vehicle. And yeah. Oh, wait. So that means LA's finest is going bye bye? Uh, who knows? I'm just assuming that this means that she'll have another show. When this, she's not. Yeah. I mean, this isn't until 2022. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, Disney, I mean, if they probably kind of figured out how to do a compressed schedule for these shows, especially looking at how they're working on the pandemic. It's like, oh no, we can make a show two years and then have it in the can ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Zach Efron starring in a three men and a baby re- modern take. Okay. Yeah, and I can hear you weren't that excited and impressed uh, about not, that one. I'm be stretching on a remake or something. Like, You're no. ki- well, I mean, I think that could, I'm just curious what that reimagining is going to look like for that. If it's just going to be silly to be silly or what they're going to do with it. Because like, that could go different ways. Well, because for me, like, remember how it was when we were watching it, it was like, it was kind of the, oh, well, we're not that. But now it's like, it was probably, it, by today's lens, that might be inappropriate. So I'm wondering how they could reimagine it yeah, so exactly. it's not inappropriate. Under the we'll day. see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's we're in the Star Wars now. New series, The Acolyte. It's a mystery thriller, thriller, mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. Okay. Uh, the High Republic is uh, their new thing to try not to step on anybody's toes and not to mess with like kind of the folks that love Darth Revan and Malak and all of them. I like the idea because um, it, it, I don't know how, I mean, it depends on how big a nerd you are. I mean, and I'm saying this because I actually am that big a nerd. Uh, but if you kind of come up with like when the Jedi and Dark Side and the Sith are both kind of forming their own little ways and how they go. There's some interesting stories you can tell if you took the time to study kind of force lore and it's like, okay, you can have a very action oriented because the, uh, like the old Republic kind of stuff is super more action. It's not the serene Jedi meditating, you know, hey, maybe we should get involved in that Clone Wars. Nah, we'll sit here and wait for it. Those guys were much more like, oh, there's trouble. We're going out, bring all the Jedi generals and do X, Y, and Z. The Sith are super bad tail dudes. So it could be, I mean, if they kind of go with that, it should be entertaining. It should be worth watching. All right. Yeah. When it comes to anything from books, I'm just going to defer to you. I'm a crazy fanatic when it comes to live action and some degree of comic books, but you are the expert. You are the master. I am the Padawan when it comes to books. I got my book of the Sith back there, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to have a new Lando show. What? And it's going to be a brand new series for Disney+. Plus. No news on which Lando. Maybe Donald Glover. Maybe Billy D. Williams for a while. I think it would be cool if they have Billy D. Williams kind of narrate yeah. the younger Donald Glover adventures. So you can see him in his smuggling prime. I think that would be awesome. I think that's the way to go. It's like, you know, back when I was in my heyday, it's like, and then yeah. you see him in my heyday, it's like, exactly. Is, oh my gosh, he's that written. This is the greatest show ever. He can yeah. suck. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm um, very much down for that one. And I think every, if, and I think some people who had their issue with Solo, and it was, like, so we, we talked in nauseam about that. I think most people said they liked Donald Glover. So yeah, exactly. He was the one that's like, yeah. Um, in case you were curious, the director 
for this or showrunner. Justin Simeon is a black guy. So that means something for a show with a black lead in the Star Wars universe. So good stuff. Looking forward to see what happens with Lando. I'm signed mm-hmm. up all the way. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. They showed a trailer sneak peek of The Bad Batch, the spinoff of The Clone Wars. And, you know, I remember when I first watched that episode, I was like, bro, I'm going to need some figures of these guys. And I'm totally down for a (laughs) spinoff. And I think it was kind of late because I was like, yo, I need figures of these guys. Yeah. Uh, I think any of us, when we saw that last season of Clone Wars, were like, Bad Batch has to get a spinoff. It was just yeah. like, that was, and I mean, he was like, and we talk about the sequels, it's like, they had them personalities in 30 minutes. Like, here's who's this guy. Here's who's this guy. Here is, bam, they're clones. They do stuff. Go. And it was very much like, what do they do? And then yeah. we saw who, I mean, the fifth member of Bad Batch now and his story. And then, I'm okay, I'm going to try and contain my excitement based on watching that trailer. It was like the last days of the Clone Wars into the Empire. It's like, and now see what the Bad Batch has been up to. It's like, oh, sign me up. I mean, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the show, that one's going to be crazy. I am looking forward to this. I want to make sure, okay, so I don't want to rush ahead to the, to the big grand finale news on the Star Wars front. So let's go. Uh, Andor, an original series. Featuring our man Cassian Andor is going to be arriving 2022. Can't Cassian, of course, is from Rogue One. Such a great movie. Must watch if you're a Star Wars fan. And really, really kind of made people go, hey, wait a second. There is future. There's a possibility. These could be great. They just need the right people working on them. Mm-hmm. And Rogue One totally was that example. Yeah. I mean, I mean, out of the seven live action Star Wars movies, I mean, that is required viewing. Uh, Wait, you said seven. You, you, how are you skipping solo? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I miss solo. I'm sorry. Again, I sometimes forget because it, as I say, I like solo. Solo isn't as much required viewing. It's cool. right, right, right. But my set, I mean, the seven Star Wars, you know, connected universe part of it, like, yeah. I got you covered. I was literally, I was talking to somebody on Facebook and they were complaining that they didn't understand, they didn't, they couldn't get into the Mandalorian. And yeah, <laughs> your face said well, everything. Really, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to. But the problem was they didn't, they weren't a Star Wars head. So okay. I was like, this is like trying to watch trying to get into the Marvel Studios universe, having only watched Endgame and Far From Home and wondering what the fuss is. Like, I don't get it. But, I, but people were doing that. They were just watching Endgame and like, yeah, I saw Black Panther. What's going on? Yeah, yeah you can't. It's, you're jumping way. You have no connection to these characters. And it's like, and I even say, it's like, I think you could watch Mandalorian by itself. If you're a fan of westerns, I don't know if you could at this point. I think the characters coming and going, the people being mentioned, would be like, who? Who's this? Yeah, now, like, I mean, like we said last week, I mean, like when Thrawn's name was mentioned, like most of us who are fans of Thrawn jumped out or she's like, yes. Um, anybody else like who's Thrawn? And if somebody just did that, like, asked me that question, I'd look at them like. Just get away from me. Just I yeah, I, I feel like that was the Order of the Phoenix part of Star Wars. If you're watching Mandalorian, and, oh, and wow. are fluent in Harry Potter, because <laughs> I was like, I've been watching these movies, but I am so completely lost. <laughs> Help me, Jeez. explain everything. Clear, clearly, everyone listening can tell that our, our secret is you do all the long reading, and I just do the, the comic books and movies. Yeah. So. I, I I remember book knowledge. You remember people's names. It works. There you out. go. It works. Well, I mean, I just don't read it, so it's not like I forgot it. I just didn't read it. All right, we knew this was coming. Rosario Dawson is going to be starring in Ahsoka. 
featuring our girls adventures our our older jedi she's not a girl any, any longer uh they made sure to say this is set within the timeline of the mandalorian for what that's worth no mention of co-stars what she's doing maybe she's going after thrawn maybe we'll see a few rebels who knows for now it's all up in the air they have a new original series that's also set within the timeline of the mandalorian called rangers of the new republic maybe this is when we work in that spinoff for cat bond i mean you can have the guy you're talking about the guy from the first episode of this season yes I... uh, look, let me pull this up you know star wars is always like infamous for just throwing together names and creating them qui-gon what <laughs> cobb van yeah timothy yeah. oliphant seems like a perfect vehicle for a marshal to be part of a ranger group right but i mean you also have like the starship troopers i mean this the uh, the star fighters going around randomly you know making sure everything's good in the old i mean the new republic they Again, I, I'm just expecting Disney to say, hey, uh, with all this new content, we're going to need to uh, jack up the price of your subscription, $3. And I'm going to be like, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. When, when, it, when it comes like this time next year, when it's like, hey, loyal subscriber, we're going to put this thing up $10 more. You're going to be like, I said auto renew. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this isn't Netflix. <laughs> Why are we having this discussion? Keep it moving. <laughs> All right, so now the big, huge, major news for Star Wars. If you are fans like you and I both are of Revenge of the Sith, Hayden Christensen is coming back and he will get his chance to fully be Darth Vader because he is going to be in Obi Wan Kenobi, starring Ewan McGregor, set 10 years after the events of Revenge of the Sith. Don't care when it's coming out. Here, I want to see this ASAP. Uh, I mean, when all of this was rumored, it was like, wow, I would totally be down for that. Right. And then when they actually said today, like, yeah, like it was r- rumored that Hayden Christian was coming back. Like, like because again, remember, 10 years ago, everybody hated on him. <laughs> but now it's like, can we get Hayden Christian back to the entire thing? Because I'm not totally hated auto i just didn't get it i was like sure you got um yeah but now we've got receipts (laughs) but i i think i i pull up the internet track i'm like seriously play the perfect um and now like that story is like one of those i know you have been like that is a story right for telling and now they're like oh yeah we're gonna tell it and we have Obi-Wan and Darth Vader back. And there's nothing that says, you know, I mean, uh, in Madrid, can't come back as the Emperor in that either. Um, there's uh, just, seriously, they just send me an email. Yeah, we're going to need two more dollars for that subscription. <laughs> oh, just got any more questions. <laughs> Let's not give me any ideas. I got figures to buy still. <laughs> oh, hey, you got bad dash figures to buy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, now we're going to shift over to Marvel Studios because they were just like, oh, 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 you're putting Wonder Woman and Suicide Squad on your streaming app? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, just put up a gif of Scott Hall. <laughs> January 15th, WandaVision drops. Uh, there was some thought that maybe it would come out by the end of this year. That's not going to happen. I guess it's just a matter of how the calendar played out because Mandalorian wraps uh the week before christmas and there's no time really to kick things off and you know there's no reason to do it christmas or new year's eve so may as well wait till the new year people are back home and maybe even recovered from you know their cults <laughs> did you see this new trailer um i did not know i i think okay I'm this trailer told- is, is it's really cool i think for everybody who was kind of questioning this whole sitcom approach with the black and white and the, hey everything's so funny and lovely this shows that other side of it so i think people who are a little leery of it they're going to come around watching this one okay i was on that leery side when we mentioned the sitcom um but 
I, 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 I mean, I'm not gonna step on any of the other stuff we're gonna talk. Okay. About. So if it's another third one, I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna watch it, but I'll probably watch the trailer after we're done recording. Okay. Good deal. So next up, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. This is coming out March 25th, 2022, which means there's going to be a huge gap from whatever happens in WandaVision to when we see Doctor Strange show up. And the official, I guess, main cast have been revealed as well. Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen, second tier. So she's totally going to be like the co-star of this movie. Benedict Wong, Rachel McAdams, she would tell Geo4, and Jachi, I hope I said her name correctly, or Jachel, Gomez is America Chavez. She's one of the newer characters from Marvel Comics, and seems like they're trying to make a focus on getting some of these newer characters out, as we will see as we keep going on this. What do you think about this one? Excited or kind of like, yeah, we'll see what happens? I know this has been in the discussion talks. In the um, Disney description, they also said, directed by Sam Raimi, the film ties to WandaVision and the next Spider-Man film. Okay, so it's, they're saying 100% required watch viewing. Uh, I'm glad they're bringing back Bob. She would tell, because I was I was hoping they didn't drop me in like that Aaron Mordo storyline. I'm like, oh, that could be, are they going to pay that off or not? I'm glad they are going to get to that. To some extent, um, I don't know how long, how much, but the fact they already mentioned he's coming back is a good sign that they, that will be a focus. Um, I again, th- th- this is one of the like uh, Doctor Strange one is the villain wasn't great, but I thought watching that movie in 3D was the way to go. Totally. Um, I'm hoping they can do this one in 3D because I, I mean that's one of the few ones it's like. As weird as this one could be, I, I think I have to watch that in 3D if, it, if it's available. But I'm definitely down for that one. Yeah. We're not going to have to wait too long after WandaVision because The Falcon and the Winter Soldier airs on March 19th. And if it's the typical eight weeks for WandaVision, then maybe we'll get like two or three weeks before Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Maybe. Mm-hmm. It's January 15th. Yeah, not too long. This trailer, did you see this one? Oh, yeah. Woo! Boy. <laughs> that one. This trailer looked like a movie. Yeah. I mean, just like that flight scene where he's just like, Falcon comes out of the jet. You know, I mean, it was like, I mean, I was like, wow, Disney's not playing right now. Oh, uh, man. It's like, I mean, and I think with the story they have to tell, um about falcon basically becoming the new captain america it's like that's a better one to let play out in a longer form than a movie and i mean seeing baron zemo back uh and they didn't i now correct me like who were the guys in mass were they like you know, u.s agent kind of deals or were u.s they agent is in this one as well but there is a different take on a Singular, singular character in the Marvel Universe that is looking like the base for a group. Now, I think it's going to be Flag Smasher or Flag Smashers, but we're not quite sure how that's going to play out. So, we'll see on that one. I think that's what they're doing. Okay. But, yeah, that the trailer, as we're talking, it's it's playing right now in my background, and I'm like, wow, this this thing looks great. And I really like that they didn't change up that dynamic between Bucky and Sam. It's 100% still there. They're playing off each other. Still like, ah, do I really like you? I don't know. It's kind of on my nerves. <laughs> so I love that. Yeah, I mean, again, this is, and I'll say this, I said this about the Batman uh, with uh, Robert Patterson. I think this could be like Anthony Mackie's like vehicle, like yeah, bring him up to that next level if that sh- if that show works. It's like. I mean, this is based. Any of these Marvel TV shows, quote unquote, are movies. They're just expensive. <laughs> so if you can get, if he does a great job on this, I think you're gonna see him up. And I and like, who is it? Up? Oh gosh, I'm trying to think who they were trying. Oh, like the rumor of like Sebastian saw is uh, a young Luke in 
they need him for uh, any of the other things. It's like, yeah, this might be making make it everybody more. <laughs> right. Exactly. And, yeah, I mean, we can't even see Pedro Pascal, but yeah, everybody's like, oh, The Mandalorian, because everyone knows about The Mandalorian, even people who don't even watch it. Uh-huh. Don't even know it's part of Star Wars. It's on their radar. So, and especially in this first half of the year or next year, when people aren't going to be able to get the virus or the vaccine, and they're still home, anything that comes out in that first quarter is going to do really well with streaming audiences or audiences who are still at home. Mm-hmm. This doesn't even account for any ice storms. All right, next up, the two movies that they have announced as of now. Black Widow still slated to come to theaters May 7th. That is before the summer time frame when everyone is supposed to be able to have access to the vaccine. Seems like a risky move. We'll see if they delay it a little bit. But I think they've already covered themselves with a backup just in case because Loki's original series on Disney Plus is slated for May 2021. I don't think that's an accident or a coincidence that that's lined up around that same month. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they have a backup date, uh, like August and July. In that realm, they might have like an animated movie they say is scheduled to come out during that time, and they'll bump it off the schedule and put it to Disney Plus if if you know things aren't where they really want it to be for Black Widow. I'm well. The- See, the interesting thing, and I think that they could potentially be in trouble with if any of these other stories reference her or characters who are supposed to be in Black Widow show up in these TV series. Because one character from Black Widow has already been teased, sort of revealed to be part of the Hawkeye cast. And... Black Widow then has to come out before Hawkeye. Uh, I'm, 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 I think, like, just look at me, like, the cast of who's in Black Widow, it looks like there is going to be some, we, I know we want to put this out in theaters, but I, I'm almost thinking it's like, uh, if we haven't put it to Disney Plus now, we got it, we got, we got, we got, we're going <laughs> I think that's kind of it's like if you meet somebody who's in a previous who's a prominent in Black Widow, you're gonna have to just say, "Hey, I'll I'll catch up and get the backstory later." I'm just gonna <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're pushing it. They're really pushing it. And the what if animated series exploring different realities, like what if Black Panther became Star Lord and Peggy Carter became Captain Britain. Are is that slated for summer 2021? And it's a TV series. It's animated. Oh, I was like, oh. And again, this seems like another case of providing a backup plan because Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is slated for July 9th in theaters only as of right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Marvel, I mean, they're they're doing their double. They're du- I like their double dipping. Just in case, like yeah, we'll see what we gotta do. We'll we'll protect ourselves. Miss Marvel is coming at some point in 2021. No time frame, which I thought was interesting for that one or She-Hulk. Big news with She-Hulk is that Mark Ruffalo is in fact coming back. It's not just rumors; he is returning, and so is Tim Roth, who's going to be Abomination again. Maybe with the better design this time. Wow. Didn't yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I like that. Yeah, that's but, cool. And now it's kind of like, yes, what happened in Incredible Hulk did count. It mattered. And yeah, you can't just yeah. skip it and act like it didn't happen. Yeah, it's like that. It's almost like the forgotten Marvel movie. And it's like, that was a good. I mean, it's like, I know me and Javon talk about this all the time. It's like, you know, that was probably the better Bruce Banner, but we'll be okay. And now you're going to bring it back. I'm actually enjoy. I will enjoy She-Hulk more because it's like, okay, this stuff happens. Now we're going to connect to a, we're going to reconnect Hulk back into the main 
computer. Exactly. Right. And being out in space, it's like, hey, how do you deal with your cousin who's now, you know, she I don't know. Exactly. So we got a release date so far for Captain Marvel 2. Uh, it's going to be November 11, 2022. So a lot of the films are coming two years from now. Nia DaCosta is directing this. Iman Bellani, who is the lead, the star of Miss Marvel, is going to be in this, as well as Tiana Paris, who is in WandaVision, playing Monica Rambeau. So we're going to see our actual first female Captain Marvel show up in this. So that'll be cool. Mm -hmm. Hawkeye have confirmed that Haley Steinfeld, Steinfeld is going to be co-starring with Jeremy Renner. Did you see the costume? Costume looked good. I'm, yeah, I'm excited like about seeing purple for Hawkeye. It's good yeah. for both of them. So that's very good news. Uh, let's see. Moon Knight. No news on when it's coming. They just showed the logo. Reminded us it's still coming. No cast announcements yet. Stay tuned. That Nick Fury show that we were speculating about, Secret Invasion. It's going to have Nick Fury, Samuel L. Jackson, and Ben Mendelsohn, who's also going to be back as Scroll Talos. Or Talos. They are going to be figuring out how the Marvel Cinematic Universe got invaded by Scrolls. The look on your face is just like, boom. I didn't even see that one, but it's amazing, right? It makes perfect sense. And yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Is, is, I mean, we we keep speculating, like, yeah, they can do secret, I mean, like, secret wars, and basically... So this on, is secret invasion. Secret invasion, it's like, yeah, that's the perk. It's, you know, I've got know, somebody who... I like to channel Lonnie for a second. This is what happens when you have confident people at the head. They know what they want, and literally <laughs> the studio and the money people get behind you and like, yes, do that. I mean, just DC shoots all over the place, and like, I mean, are you are you gonna talk at all about DC? Because I, I just that little piece. We of do need to mention that because it was it was funny and interesting. We'll say that for the end. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we definitely will. Yeah. But yeah, um, and there are people who are dead in the current MCU, dead quote unquote, that they could bring back. They don't have to be the super powered, you know, on that level. There is um, Jasper Sitwell, who we saw Winter Soldier throw, but we never saw his body as it got run over. He could have been a scroll. And Nick Fury could have, like, I mean, now, yeah, because Nick Fury has already seen the scroll, so he's like, he's like, no, that's the scroll. Get him as soon as possible. I think he's a scroll. Um, but no, he could have been a, he could have been masquerading as Sitwell. And joined up with Hydra, and the real Sitwell was actually totally innocent. I, I know that. Well, there's that. There's that one. But I'm also saying it's like kind of how in Captain Marvel, where after the scroll gets you know hit in the car, it reverts back to a scroll. He gets hit, and you know, he gets dropped on the. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. But no one would have seen his body. So that's that's what that's the whole thing I was saying that he's somebody who's deaf. We didn't see on camera. It was implied. So. That's one that they could easily throw in there. And Mysterio I'm, I, could be a scroll. And I, I, I still, I'm still gonna bet. I'm, I'm still saying you could still say Quicksilver was a super scroll. He'd have to be. There's no um, way a speedster gets killed by bullets he sees coming. Think yeah, it. and it's like I mean, like when they were all trying to go to Sokovia, scroll takes him out real quick, and why he's changing for his uh big showdown. So many ways. And, and that would be one of the easier ones to knock out because if he doesn't see you coming, you could apparently take him out. Yeah. And let's see, who else could they bring back in this capacity? If if she really wanted to, we could get Black Widow. Uh, I go with Maria Hill as a scroll. Well, they did that already with the visual of Maria Hill as a scroll. Oh, yeah. So that wouldn't necessarily work the same. The shocking, you know, his number two says his number one and two. I mean, he and his number two are scrolls. Yeah. Now maybe um, this is the way they bring in Daredevil, because he is a character that could 
do things to help them without needing a huge super special effects budget outside of the scrolls of course yeah. um, okay. maybe he recruits the defenders to help him maybe they're all low level low tier power guys yeah. and as as i mean we talked about i mean like the the as much as we didn't think about it, that the, that two years went blew by uh them not being on camera on netflix so uh my colson still you know <laughs> it looks like you know luke cage i mean i don't yeah. know chris Ritter wants to do it but i'm I mean, charlie cox is like i'm i'm very much down if y'all you know you put the numbers in front of me right <laughs> i think just put disney i'll be there exactly <laughs> okay uh it looks like it says bob just pick it up just yeah. pick it up. We're, we're good we're good we're good <laughs> um next up Disney Plus series, Ironheart, featuring Riri Williams. She is going to be played by Dominique Thorne, and she's going to be creating the creator of the most advanced suit of armor since Iron Man. I think this really works well in the context of a dead Iron Man that's no longer part of this universe. Uh-huh. And having another black character, all for it. Uh I'm thinking because I I have not paid too much attention to her in the comic book, but she's a cool character. Yeah, I mean, like you got a kid who you know, especially kind of after, like I said, after a dead time to start is like you know, just as Peter Parker is just brilliant enough to you know start you know messing with his tech. A kid could say, like, hey, I can see how that Iron Man armor works. I mean, I can reverse me. There's nothing that says a genius in that universe can't reverse engineer something like. Yeah, I, I actually did it. That's mm-hmm. what I, and then, you know, low level New York kind of, you know, does her thing there. Like so. All right. So Don Cheadle will be back as Rhodey in Armor Wars, an original series. <laughs> what? And he is going to be tackling Tony Stark's nightmare when his tech falls into the wrong hands. This is going to be an adaptation of the acclaimed armor wars series in the iron man comic and i think this is perfect for a tv show and gives us more time to spend with roadie because he'll have six or eight episodes to deal with the fallout of tony's legacy and just a great idea for a show yes like i mean wow (laughs) i didn't even hear about that show i'm just like i'm here for you you. wow i like that I like that idea. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's almost like the void of Tony Stark's death is giving them infinite possibilities. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just like, oh, wow. That vacuum is so, has so much potential. Mm-hmm. Um, so, wow. Really works for him. Yeah. James Gunn is going to be directing and writing a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. That's an original special coming to Disney Plus 2022. I'm laughing at the thought of what that would entail as well. Um, that's just gonna be good. Hey, Dave, Dave Batista prize group in uh, Drax should just make that hilarious. Exactly. What is it? Why would you put ornaments on a tree? This doesn't make any sense. The tree, the tree. The tree cut doesn't need water. Right. Ridiculous. Groot is a tree. Why don't we put ornaments on him? Yeah. He writes itself, basically. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Groot. There's going to be an I Am Groot series uh, featuring Baby Groot, a series of shorts featuring several new and unusual characters. You got your five through, you know, two through nine years old taken care of right there. Yep, all squared away. We finally know what, what Christian Bale is going to be doing in Thor Love and Thunder. He is playing Gore the God Butcher. He's a newer character. I think his name is pretty self-explanatory. And this one also is still slated for theaters. But this one may actually make its release date in theaters. It's coming May 6, 2022. Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, Christian Bale is a bad guy. I'm actually really down for that. I think it could work. Yeah. You know, it's ironic. Um, They are a... George Clooney away from completing George Clooney and Val Kilmer away from completing a Batman set and having them involved in their movies. <laughs> we 
forgot the whole segment. And they're going to have to get Robert Pattinson soon at some point now. No, no new development on the Blade film with Mahershala Ali, but we do have a name. Instead of Ant-Man 3 or Ant-Man and the Wasp 2, we finally got a title for this third installment. It's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which just sounds outrageous. Sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, Michael Douglas, Michelle Pfeiffer, they're coming back. They're joined by Catherine Newton, who I last saw in Freaky, in the Vince Vaughn body swap thriller. Uh-huh. She's good in that. So she's going to be playing Cassie Lang. So Cassie's going to have her blonde hair now. So why isn't the girl who's playing Cassie coming Cause back? Because she needs to be aged up. Oh, I thought... Aged up a little bit more. Okay, I thought the girl who was... Uh... In uh, Endgame was actually old. I thought I thought she was older than the girl who was playing the freak. It was actually a supernatural. That's why I. I, oh, okay. I, That's I what like, you off. okay. Yeah, I'm like, but I guess like yeah, probably was like three or four years ago. So yeah. Jonathan Majors has officially been announced as Kang the Conqueror. I know there's some stuff that's like uh, we knew that months ago, but until Disney confirms it, nothing on that front. Now, this is the quote-unquote disappointing news of the reveals for me. Black Panther 2, coming July 8th, 2022. Not that that's coming. Um, Because Kevin Feige doesn't want to tarnish or mess up the the portrayal of Chadwick Boseman, he's not recasting Black Panther. The sequel is instead going to focus on Wakanda and the characters introduced in the first film. I don't know what that really means, but I feel like it would be better to call this Black Panther World of Wakanda as opposed to Black Panther 2. Because in Black Panther 2, I'm expecting to see Black Panther. I think that's kind of two years away code for you will see Shuri (laughs) as Black Panther, but we're not going to say she's going to have the role, especially based on her social media the last couple of days, it didn't help to, you know, yeah, we're elevating her to Black Panther. Oh, gosh. Yeah, we got to calm that down a bit. It's yeah. like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Like, mother F. Oh, last mother news, F. because there was so much, but we, we finally reached it. John Watts, the director of Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home, will be directing Fantastic Four. We're good. <laughs> we are. So, I mean, it's like, I mean, AJ is it's like, I, 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 even though it's on Disney Plus, I still can't bring myself to wait two hours, even working from home, to watch that last Fantastic Four. Um, I, I, I want to see some competent Fantastic Four. Um, so somebody who had, who was able to treat uh, Spider Man Far From Home, um, uh, with, in, like what we're used to from the character and actually having fun, I'm hoping they bring that to that team. Um, I mean, I can't imagine he's not. And I'll say this, I never, I did not hate the original two Fantastic Four movies with Jessica Alba. But, you know. You mean Captain America. uh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, Captain America made cameos, you know, he was a scroll, you know, whatever. Uh, But I think you can use them as a nice uh, springboard to Marvel Phase 10, honestly, um, at this point. Um, I think just the Fantastic Four could just bring so much I mean, could help them print money if they do it right. So I'm glad to have the director doing it. Yeah, I think that that one could 100% be a whole franchise in the way that the Avengers have been all this time for them. And I don't think it's going to take that much work, just so long as the director and Marvel Studios has the right direction for it. And I have no reason to suspect that they won't. It's you very think clear. Bring... What did you say? I was saying, do you think they bring Franklin Richards uh, in too early, or to let it kind of simmer? Early? I don't think they need to. There's no real need to have him show up right now. He's yeah. he's there, and yeah, he didn't. He doesn't even need to be. I mean, I think for the first film, just let us know them. 
not necessarily try to work in the kids and all that other stuff. Mean, that goes down mean, a whole different path. You mean don't black lightning it? Yes, yes. Don't don't do that. So some, my my whole thing with black lightning is because I didn't think that that was necessarily cool to do it with the only show featuring a black lead. Um, not so much that the kids were around because you know just kids are always around in these shows. Eventually they come. Plus, I thought they missed out on something having little kids with him feeling guiltier, guilty about leaving them to go deal with stuff, like missing bedtime stories because he's out in the streets of Freeland. I mean, they were teenagers. They weren't for one was a teenager, one was a full adult. So it wasn't like they were going to miss him, you know? Well, they're both rebellious. I mean, they were both rebellious. Yeah, exactly. Like, we don't need you, Dad. Exactly. <laughs> why, not you, yeah. why not go fight some superheroes? Y'all don't need me. Exactly. Um, yeah, so that was not good. So you, I'll let you take this one since you sent it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so DC News. Uh, yeah. So in DC News, um, somebody asked um, Patty Jenkins, uh, how much did you study uh, the Josh Whedon uh, title of Justice League uh, when you were coming up with making uh, Wonder Woman 1984? And I don't know if she decided to take a, dri- a sip of the candy juice, but she said, not much. I pretty much had no use for the movie like pretty much everybody else. And it was like, wow. Yeah, uh, she she did not hold back anything. It's like, uh, I mean, and this is why I was talking about this like early in the second minute. It's just like, that would not happen in a Marvel movie. I mean, it's like, you have to pay attention to stuff. If you're going to use a character, you got to look at the tone. You have to, I mean, if you're going to like shift the comedy, you got to figure out how to use the character. And Patty's just like, that's my Wonder Woman. And y'all were lucky to use her competently. Um, and now I don't have to care what that was because that was just not the right. I mean, she's just like, no, I don't care. And Patty was basically like, it was trash. I mean, that's basically what she said. <laughs> it's like I, I know I had as much use for it as the critics and fans, and it's like, yeah, uh, I I don't I don't know how I just I I mean like we complain about this all the time. I just hope they come up with a competent vision for the DC stuff. Um, it's it's not you don't I mean they're not going to be Marvel Marvel, but just make it competent and fun for us fans. And that's all we need. We, we'd appreciate it whole, I mean, a whole lot more. Yeah. All right. Well, you sent me this last news. This one was the terrible news of the day. Um, Tiny Lester, who probably a lot of you remember more from Friday, it's Debo. And I have a newfound appreciation for Debo because I'm a Niners fan, of course. And one of our players is named after him, Debo Samuel. And because of his penchant for just ripping through players like Debo's ripping chains off of people. And, uh, but yeah, for you and I, of course, we saw him first as Zeus, the human wrecking machine, who would twist and snap Hogan and everybody's neck. And, you know, ah, he didn't wrestle too well, but I mean, he was an imposing figure. And that's all you need sometimes in wrestling. He was a big 6'5 dude, you know, he was a, you know, as much as everybody thought he was big and, uh, Friday, it was like when he was like in wrestler and tight, he was like, Whoa, yeah, he's hey, scary. Him. Yeah, it's like he had the little mohawk kind of thing. Right. Like, uh, no, he didn't have the mohawk, he just had Z painted on his side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so he looked, he looked real intimidating. Yeah, um, and then of course, he had that awesome cameo in the dark night. I'll do what you should have done five minutes ago. He just sits right. back, and nobody's coming up on Zeus, so yeah, just, yeah. It was just like that, and that was the scene. You're like, who's going to talk to him? It's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, he he decided to do that. We think it was <laughs> Everybody just sat back there, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that may have been the most realest thing in that entire movie. Oh yeah, I think I think everybody else, every one of us, if that big dude says, "Say, give it to me," here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which way you're going to go, but I'm sure it's the right call. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, big man. Well, thank you, bro, for joining me on this special impromptu emergency show because there was too much. And Disney was like, screw your plans for your podcast this week. But I will happily take it in this case. It was a fun one.
Yeah. I'm, glad it, it, I'm glad all the stuff we saw. So it, 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 I'm glad to do it. Good deal. All right. Well, thank you as always, little bro. And thank y'all out there for listening. This episode of Lyle's Movie Files has been filed.